Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. Maybe if there's anything missing in our society today, it's faithfulness, Colin. And that's the subject we're looking at today in relationship to the character of the Holy Spirit. So, as we've seen, as we've looked at all these characteristics, it's not me or you trying to be faithful. It's being surrendered, yielded to the Holy Spirit so the faithfulness of God that he has put within us can be manifested and keep us walking in faithfulness. And you're right. I mean, I've often preached in in recent months uh, about the need that God has of a faithful people and a faithful church. The church, even in this nation, is apostate in so many ways. It has deserted the principles of God, the principles of his word, has failed to measure up to the challenges uh, that there are in our society today. Uh, Instead of standing up and really giving spiritual leadership, the church appears to be more like a wimp in so many ways. I don't like to say these things because God loves his church. And I want to see a church that honors God. I want to see a faithful people. And we have to remember that church is people. So what he needs is a faithful people. But what does it mean to be faithful? Well, this is a fruit of the Spirit. So in what way is the Spirit faithful? Well, first and foremost, the Spirit is faithful to the Word of God. Jesus made that very clear. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. He is the spirit of truth who will guide us into all the truth. He will take the things of Jesus and declare them to us. He will remind us of everything that Jesus has said and done. So that's the way in which the Holy Spirit is faithful. So that's the way in which God wants us to be faithful in the power of the Holy Spirit. Not to leave the word of God, not desert the word of God, but actually to uphold the word of God and to uphold the principles of God's word, not to try to interpret the word so that we just have a lax attitude towards the things that God considers sinful, but we uphold the integrity and the authority of God's word that's being faithful. However, it has to be said, Colin, that uh, the finger can be pointed at churches that claim to be charismatic, where the people are full of the Holy Spirit, and yet terrible things happen. Yeah, but then I haven't finished. We have to be faithful to the Word, but we have to be faithful to the leading of the Holy Spirit. It's the Word and the Spirit operating together. And I said just now that the Holy Spirit will never lead us into sin. The Holy Spirit will never lead us into anything that is evil. The Holy Spirit will never lead us into anything that is contradictory to the Word of God. The Word and the Spirit agree in everything. Um, The Holy Spirit is never, never, ever going to undermine the authority of Scripture, the authority of God's Word. In fact, the Holy Spirit upholds the authority of God's Word. So things go wrong when things get out of sync? Things will go wrong when people stop listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit bringing before us the truth of God's Word. You see, when you hear of the unfaithfulness of Christians, they have deserted the Word of God. And they've deserted the Word of God perhaps for out of a whole variety of reasons, pride. They think they no longer have to listen to the Holy Spirit. They no longer have to obey the Word of God. And the pride has given birth to sin in a whole variety of forms. So they end up by being unfaithful. Perhaps most Christians go through a phase at some time in their lives where they realize they have been unfaithful to God, perhaps not in a major way, 
but in some minor ways. And the shock of realizing that they've been unfaithful in some way makes them realize just how important it is to be faithful. Um, so, uh, you know, it isn't that God washes his hands of people if they do go through a, a period of sin, a backsliding, of being unfaithful to him. His, his desire is always to restore them and to bring them back to the place of faithfulness. And you'll find that often those that have been away from the Lord for a season, when they come back, are stronger in their faith, stronger in their commitment, stronger in their dependence upon the Holy Spirit, and therefore they radiate more of the life of the Spirit than they ever did before. And I suppose it's because of the nature of God and the, the Holy Spirit that we can come back when we have fallen. That is the wonder of it. He is patient, he is kind, as we've been discussing these past few days. Well, of course, what the Scripture says to us that is that even if we are faithless, he remains faithful. He doesn't change. And he he is always faithful to his word. He's always faithful to his promises. And he watches over his word to perform it. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away, says Jesus. So, uh, I mean, that's how important the word of God is. You know, people with our, their ideas, political correctness will pass away. And the sooner the better. But the word of God will endure forever. And God hasn't changed from the beginning. He doesn't change. His character doesn't change. No, his character doesn't change. Therefore, his will doesn't change. Therefore, his expectations of his people doesn't, don't change. And therefore, the life that the Holy Spirit wants to create within us doesn't change. Uh, you know, it's been my privilege to experience revival and to be parts of revivals in different parts of the world. I've certainly read a lot about revivals in former generations. And let me tell you this straight, that in a time of revival, the things that the church tolerates now would be totally intolerable. And it would speak out against things that are actually happening within many of the churches today. Like what? Well, like the attitude to a lot of sexual practice, um, like the attitude towards other religions. I mean, um, I believe we have to honor and respect what other people believe, but not at a cost to being quiet about what we believe. To a Christian, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is divine. He is the only Savior of the world. And we cannot back down from that. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And uh, we cannot in any way compromise the truth and say, well, that might offend others. Of course it will offend those who believe other things, just as what uh, people of other faiths believe offends me. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to, to mention specific things, but of all the other major religions, it offends me. Uh, with some of them, to, to say that they worship the same God when they believe such diametrically opposite things about God to what I believe as a Christian is just a nonsense. To believe in a whole plethora of gods and just say, well, we can accept Jesus as one of these many gods is to me totally offensive. Um, but the difference between a Christian and and so many other faiths, is a Christian will be tolerant. We're, we're back to that word that you introduced a few days ago. will be tolerant about what other people believe, whereas those of other faiths are very intolerant. One obvious situation is the Muslim community want us to be very tolerant towards them in this country. And because we are predominantly a Christian country, uh, we're not a post-Christian country. The ethos, the laws, everything about this country have been birthed out of the Christian faith. But you go to Muslim countries and they are totally intolerant towards Christians. Uh, in most Muslim countries, you are not allowed 
to evangelize Muslims. You can be imprisoned. You could be um, thrown out of the country. You could even be killed for for um, converting others. There's just a total lack of tolerance. Uh, you're not allowed to found churches. You're not allowed to do all kinds of things. Um, in nations that we have diplomatically good relationships with. It's not just what we would regard the rogue nations. So you see, there's a, there's a big, big difference between the attitude that Christians have towards, we respect, I, I respect that a Muslim has the, the right to believe what he believes. I don't believe he's right or I would be a Muslim. Uh, and I will be tolerant towards, but not at the cost of denying what I believe. And I only wish that people of other faiths were as tolerant towards Christians as Christians are towards those of other faiths. But other faiths don't have the Holy Spirit. Precisely. And that that is the big, big difference, isn't it? And... What is absolutely clear, Julia, is because we have the Holy Spirit. If we're going to walk in the Spirit, follow the leading of the Spirit, we have no alternative but to be faithful to the Holy Spirit, faithful to God, and to really be thankful that if we trust in the Spirit, He will keep us faithful. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 